Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being here for the first AGL Summit East. Um, the AGL Association is a professional association for people working in government digital services. And it's standing up and taking shape at such an important time in the digital service movement. I'm Corey Zarek, and I will be your host for the day, um, walking us through an incredible set of speakers um, and panels and conversations with some great leaders from the digital service community. Since leaving my role in government as the Deputy US Chief Technology Officer back in 2017, I've spent a lot of time thinking about what so many of the leaders in this room and beyond were able to accomplish over the last five to 10 years in the uh, digital services and civic tech, public interest tech, whatever we're calling it, um, in this, this movement. Hundreds and, and really probably thousands of people in all levels of government all around the world have been taking a more customer-centric approach to how government delivers services and delivers its mission. And it's not only providing better outcomes for the public by and large, but it's also improving the experience for the people working in government. I got to play a very small role in that ecosystem, sitting in the Office of, uh, the, of Science and Technology Policy at the White House, where some of this work kicked off and, and took hold at the federal level. Um, together, we saw the launch of the Presidential Innovation Fellows. We saw some of those fellows uh, go on to stand up 18F to be a more permanent service delivery option in government. We saw the creation of the US Digital Service and accompanying teams around the federal government, the technology transformation services and all of its related teams taking shape at, at GSA. Um, and we had an opportunity to work and learn a lot from our friends around the world, um, those in the UK at the Government Digital Service who came before a lot of us and who uh, patiently coached us through a lot of these, um, these efforts and uh, had, have had chances to um, uh, send some of our talent offshore. Our friends in Canada um, are continuing to carry this work forward. And um, it's important to also note that um, in addition to the great leadership coming from our governments all around the world, a lot of this work has also been spearheaded by folks outside of government and in civil society. Um, people like Jen Palka, who founded Code for America 10 years ago and who has really been a leading voice in the civic tech movement, who actually took a year out of her time at Code for America to come and join government to help us get a lot of this going. Um, and strong leaders outside of government are needed to support any sector, and certainly this one. So it's actually what caused me to take my recent role at Georgetown University at the Beck Center for Social Impact and Innovation, where we're building some teams and programs to support uh, government digital services from, from outside of government. We recognize that there's only so much government folks can do. Um, you're very busy running at the problems you need to solve day in and day out, and that is more than a full-time job. So setting up some support mechanisms outside of government where we can help to document the lessons learned and create opportunities to bring us all together to work on projects and share information is uh, what we're up to at the Beck Center and really what the AGL Association is all about and why we're here today at the AGL Summit. Um, I was thrilled to hear about this relatively new organization. Um, that's focused on bringing people together, working directly inside of government and also those of us outside to find more ways to provide support for the people doing the work. There are a lot of opportunities that we can explore together through AGL, um, considering how to surface more uh, options for training and skills building and sharing resources like case studies and templates and even job descriptions. Um, holding great events like this one where we can bring people together and connect on the work that we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm looking forward to this day together and um, looking forward to hearing from many of the leaders in this field and looking forward to working together with all of you to consider how AGL can take shape and move forward in uh, the days ahead. So to officially kick us off, um, I'd like to wear, welcome Aaron Pava to the stage. Aaron is the executive director for the AGL Association, and he's in his day job the chief experience officer for civic actions. Aaron spent some time with the US Digital Service, where he worked in, uh, on some efforts to modernize procurement. And uh, he's put an incredible amount of work into uh, putting this day together. So please welcome Aaron. Well, thank you, Corey. Thank you for being our master of ceremonies today. Um, it truly is an honor to have you here. 
And thank you all for being here and being part of this important event, our first event in the nation's capital, really where this movement has started, as Corey described. So the AGL Association officially started as a nonprofit just over a year ago, and we've been gaining more and more members every week. Our mission is simple. We want to support the digital service practitioners like you with resources and a platform to help grow and connect this community and grow the movement. So we're honored to have so many speakers here today, over 30 speakers from federal, state, and local, and in the tech community. Um, and I also want to thank, thank our sponsors for truly making this event possible. They're the ones that took the leap of faith to really bring a new event together, and we couldn't have done it without them. Um, starting a new event is always a risk, and, uh, and uh, it really was their faith and their contribution that had us be here today. So Ad Hoc, Agile 6, Civic Actions, Code for America, Fearless, Flexion, Flexon, GovLoop, Media Barn, Oddball, STSI, Trust, and Ann Partners. All these partners truly are helping move forward this movement, and they're all represented here in the, in the other room. And so I hope you have a chance to go meet with them, talk with them, understanding the kind of projects and solutions that they're up to. So let's all give them a round of applause for making this day possible. And just a couple of house cleaning items. Um, we have coffee and beverages in the other room. Um, we really hope you stick around for lunch. We have a free box lunch for everyone and a chance to really connect. And I mean, to me, this is really the heart of this, uh, this event, you know, a platform for us to be able to connect with each other and build those personal relationships. So, um, so we want, we'd love to have you all stay here and eat with us. And then um, in the evening, as we wrap up the program, uh, around 5, we are going to uh, move to uh, the Penn Quarter Sports Bar. It's just around the corner. We have food. We have free drinks. Um, that's really going to be an opportunity <laughs> for you to really connect. And uh, so, um, and as many of you as it could be there, uh, we would very much welcome and we're excited to be there. So again, thank you, Corey, for guiding us through this awesome day. Okay, our next speaker currently serves as a principal engineer in the Canadian Digital Service. Yes, one of our, uh, one of our um, offshoots. He was an early member of the US Digital Service from 2015 to 2017. He worked for the Department of Veteran Affairs Veterans Affairs on claims processing, managing the vets.gov engineering team, and also working on hiring. Uh, Jeff Maher has also worked with several state-level uh, state digital service teams via Code for America and Civic Actions, and also as a consultant. So today he will talk to us about framing work around outcomes. Please welcome Jeff Maher. Hey everyone, uh, nice to meet you. I'm Jeff. Uh, Canada generously let me out of the country to come and speak, um, literally because the Canadian embassy is next door. Um, so thanks for thanks for letting me uh, inviting me in. Um, I've worked with a few digital service uh, governments at, at this point, and I've had both successes and failures at each of these, and. Uh, the way that I, I started thinking about this was that I had uh, one of those days where I had just had a lot of really intense internal team conflict and bureaucracy busting. Uh, you've probably all had those days where you're questioning, like, ah, oh, am I going to achieve anything? And what's the very nature of human existence? Um, it, it, it's tough. And so I asked, like, am I, am I achieving any kind of impact here with the work that I'm doing? I turned to my uh, brilliant policy analyst uh, wife, uh, and she said, let me tell you about logic models. 
So a logic model, um, at its very core, is uh, it's, it helps you. It's a, a thinking framework for thinking through what is your goal and why are you doing it? Um, and is what's happening, what am I putting into it, is that directly leading to the thing that I want to achieve? Now, we're, we're at the uh, Agile Government Leaders Summit. Uh, I have to warn you, there's some imagery here that looks a little bit like a waterfall, um, but uh, <laughs> it's, not, it's not waterfall. It's a way to think through and evaluate what you're working on, and it can, it's a living thing. It's not like your upfront plan that you have to follow forever and ever. So let's go through some of the parts of a logic model. The first part is called an outcome. This is a measurable thing that happens as a result of a program or the thing that you're, you're, you're working on. So let's start here. Here's an outcome. Jeff is happy. I, I like this outcome. Uh, but it's not, it's not a terribly good one um, because it's not very measurable. So let's tack on a few uh, simple measures. I'm kind of a simple guy. So, uh, Let's uh, say that I'm happy because I have pizza in my belly and I have some time with my friends. The next part of a logic model is called an input. And this is what you put into it. And that can be a mix of things. It could be the budget, it could be the environment, it could be the staff, the tools, the resources, things like that. So let's add some inputs. These might look familiar if you've ever had pizza before. Uh, you got your dough, you got your oven, uh, tomato sauce and cheese. So uh, there we go. We're off to a good start. The next part of a logic model are activities. And these are the actions that you perform, the things that you do. So uh, here we go. Uh, we're going to start with uh, baking crust, adding some sauce, uh, adding cheese, actually really baking it. Um, I'm probably not very good at making pizza. Um, but th these are the actions that we're doing. The next part are outputs. So these are the artifacts that you produce uh, through your activities. So an obvious example here is that by, doing, by adding these things in and doing these things on those, uh, we have an output, which is pizza. But uh, that doesn't actually get us to our outcomes. So we need to add some things. We totally forgot about time with friends. So, here we go. We add uh, a venue, uh, a place to actually host the, the, the pizza shindig, uh, a home, and some friends. And then we have to in actually invite them uh, because uh, just because we build the pizza it doesn't mean they're going to come. So you've got to do that. Uh, and then our output is that we have a visit with friends. And now we are at our outcome. I am happy. Uh, pizza is in my belly. And I've uh, gotten to visit with some friends. So let's talk about something a little bit more serious than a pizza party. Let's say, um, in this context, that we're at a white male-dominated organi engineering organization. And uh, for the sake of this exercise, this is a very quick abbreviated thing, we're going to just define diversity as uh, gender and racial diversity. So our outcome is that our engineering organization has a diverse uh, and qualified staff to better enable us to meet the needs of the people we serve. And our measure is uh, some double-digit percent of our staff uh, is diverse. So this is how a lot of organizations look when they try to go about tackling this. Uh, they have a talent team. Uh, they write up some uh, job descriptions and post that online. Uh, by getting that on, they get people to apply to the job. Um, so you get a candidate pool. Uh, from that candidate pool, uh, you schedule interviews, uh, you conduct those interviews and score the interviews, and uh, from that you have interview evaluations and then you can make offers uh, and potentially new hires pop out at the, at the end. But this, this doesn't really uh, fully get us to our uh, outcome. Uh, there's, a f there's a few things missing here. So, for example, uh, you, if we just look at the beginning of our inputs, we have like job sites. Uh, are, are diverse individuals going to those job sites? If not, you're, you're not going to get uh, those people applying to your job. Um, so you need to add some inputs of those sites uh, or recruiting events that you want to go to where those people are already at. Um, so you, you need to add both those inputs and those activities. And the next thing is like our interviewers. Uh, might not be aligned on what qualified means. So you need to have some actions, uh, some activities that get you to a, alignment on that. 
Um, but you also uh, need to train them to, uh, with unconscious bias training or uh, being, getting them to be able to ask questions that allow for non-normative answers. Um, and then uh, one of the last things, I, I have an input here called employment laws, which is kind of a special one. This is a quick talk, so I won't go too big into this, and I'm not an employment lawyer. Uh, but you can't just put in your job description, I want women and uh, uh, racial minorities. Uh, so it means that your process uh, has to be able to include everybody, which means that on your outputs, you need to be measuring uh, what, uh, your, that your candidate pool um, is, is diverse. Um, because you're trying to increase the probability of getting to your, your outcome. Um, and so it's good to, to measure that uh, as you go. So that, that takes us actually to some of the common pitfalls. Um, and I, th I think where logic models can, can help teams, um, these are some of the things that I, I see sometimes in civic tech groups. So let, we just talked about how sometimes outputs aren't measured, um, and that's an important thing to do. The next one uh, is one of the most common ones. And I think civic tech in its early days had this problem more so than it does now. Uh, but uh, people associated like, oh, I made a website and I made an app. And now like my outcome is achieved. But like a website or an app isn't an outcome in and of itself. Your outcome is like uh, the poverty rate of Washington, DC uh, decreased by double digit percent or something like that. Um, so, so you need to kind of disambiguate those two. Uh, another one is that teams don't always have alignment um, around their outcomes and, and why they want to achieve those outcomes. So like, does your organization have a mission and values that help you get there? And is everybody on the same page? Uh, and then the last one uh, is that sometimes uh, groups tend to do practices over outcomes. Like it is, it is wonderful to get your team to be agile and have a DevOps culture and do design thinking. But those are, those are not outcomes. Those are things that help you get there. Uh, so um, keep that in mind as, as you go about uh, the work. So uh, I'm going to leave you with this, uh, this food for thought. Uh, what is your logic model? Like, what, how does, what is what you're doing um, in your job? Uh, how does that all add up? Um, and then as you're, as you're hearing the talks today, uh, what, are, what are the logic models of the people that are talking? Uh, do they add up? How do they add up? And based on your own inputs and capabilities, can you reuse what they're doing? And um, another thing, too, is that a lot of us are technologists in the room. Uh, this is from the policy world. Uh, talk to your policy uh, partners about this, um, because now you'll have a good vocabulary for communicating about impact with them. So uh, last thing is, uh, if you uh, want to come and help build the, the, the logic model of the Canadian Digital Service, you don't have to be Canadian. Uh, we are hiring. Uh, so uh, check us out at uh, digital.canada.ca or come find me uh, throughout the day. Thank you.